What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, I want to talk about what my watch list is looking like for tomorrow, the 22nd of January in 2019. And I also wanted to talk about some more stocks that you guys DM'd me on Instagram from my story post yesterday. So for all you guys that don't follow me on Instagram already, the link is down below in the description box. I posted a story on Instagram yesterday asking you guys to shout out DM DM me a couple of tickers that you wanted me to talk about on the YouTube video. So I covered some of those in yesterday's video, got some more DMs from yesterday's video after I recorded it. So I figured I'd cover those tickers in this video. And I'm also going to be scanning some stocks live in this video. So if you guys do enjoy the content, feel free to smash that like button before we do get started with today's video. It really does help the channel grow. And I really do appreciate you guys 100% fully for smashing that like button and supporting this YouTube channel. It's been a very great journey so far. So without further further ado guys let's get started with today's video so I have a watch list right here guys this is my 122 19 watch list and like I said in yesterday's video guys on off days on holidays when the markets are closed I usually do this for a couple of hours in the morning when I would typically be trading and by this I mean you know look at my watch list construct a new watch list for tomorrow and scan through a couple of stocks using one of my scanners that I have here here, there's a video on this scanner. Just type in a uh, swing trading scanner or something like that. It'll pop up on YouTube. You can also look it up through my channel. Just type in scanner and you can watch that video. And it's a very basic scanner, guys. It pops up some stocks. You know, I take a look at them, you know, try to see some nice patterns that I personally like to trade and go from there, right? So, you know, these are some stocks on my 122.19 watch list here that we've seen me trade a bunch in the past guys so let's hop into this chart section right here and talk about a couple that I like and see value in for tomorrow and I did cover some of these in yesterday's video so I'm sorry if this is a bit repetitive but we saw some uh, action in the futures markets that I also wanted to look at as well in terms of crude oil uh, gold futures the Nasdaq futures are open right now as well so there's been some new data um, you know in think or swim obviously since last time I've recorded this video so I really want to just take a look at some movement again um, you know just to really understand where we could potentially be headed in these futures because these correlate with the inverse ETFs that we trade all the time on this channel but before we do get into those inverse ETFs let's talk about a couple of stocks that I personally see value in and some that you guys DM'd me on Instagram so AMD is the first one that I want to talk about today and a bunch Bunch of the semiconductor stocks guys if you've been following those over the past couple of weeks you know obviously the whole market has been doing well but these semiconductors in particular have been doing very well so we've seen AMD over the past couple of days um, you know it's been actually holding this 50 SMA um, support here holding a higher low from the previous and it bounced very nicely on that 50 simple moving average support and it's opening up a good opportunity right now in my opinion let me quickly clear this drawing set for you all so we can see exactly what I'm talking about here so based on this trend line we can see that you know AMD is clearly holding this higher low it's bounced on the 50 SMA and we are heading up potentially heading up towards that $21.50 resistance that we do see here from a couple of weeks back this was back in the 8th of January of 2019 so I see potential guys if we do pull back and touch this 50 SMA again or the top of this trend line that we could go from 2050 2075 where we are right now and continue this uptrend and break through this resistance so my first target on AMD would be around 2135 2140 and that offers a nice profit from where we are right now of around three percent so if you're more of a conservative trader you don't like going for the these high leveraged ETFs that I trade sometimes, right, that offer 10, 15% margin sometimes, you know, AMD might be a better opportunity for you due to it being a smaller, um, you know, margin of profit, better suited.
suitable for the conservative trader out there. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of AMD, guys. I want to set an alert. I want to see if it breaks $21. So I'm going to create that alert right now very quickly. And I also want to see if it breaks below $20.50. So I'm going to set two alerts here on AMD at or above alert there and I'm going to do an is at or below alert at $20.50. So I want to see if there's going to be movement in AMD either up or down um, you know this upcoming trading day and that's going to really just influence my decision on whether or not I'm going to be trading it or whether or not I'm just going to be leaving it alone. Another stock that I'm watching for tomorrow is Cron, ticker symbol C-R-O-N. So we've seen Cron and CGC, which is another uh, marijuana company, canopy growth company. They've been having some ridiculous runs over the past couple of weeks. Remember a couple of weeks ago, guys, I shouted out Cron right here on this cup pattern that was forming. It was around... I believe I shouted it out at like $11, $12 or something like that. If you guys remember, drop a comment down below. But since then, guys, it's literally gone from $11 all the way up to this resistance. So you may be asking me, why would you look at Cron even though, you know, it, 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 since it's at a resistance and the RSI is overbought, right? This seems like a trade that you wouldn't want to take. But with marijuana stocks, guys, the thing you have to consider is that there's a ton of hype behind them, right? There's a ton of hype behind them and they can catch on fire and shoot up 10% regardless of what the technicals are saying, right? So this is the number one reason why, you know, I'm watching Cron regardless that, you know, it's overbought here. It's at a resistance. We're seeing a red candlestick because, you know, we could shoot into the $16 range. We could shoot up another 10%. Like we've seen it go 9%, 15%. In a day, and it really just goes, you know, against the technicals sometimes, which is why it's worth watching when it's hot. When the marijuana stocks are hot, they are worth watching for potential day trades. So, Cron, guys, I'm watching it. If it breaks $15, I really think it could run to the next level, which could be around 16, especially since they are very hot right now. And if we're looking at CGC, guys, same exact thing, right? The technicals are showing that we are at a resistance pretty much near $45. We're overbought in terms of the RSI and we're slowly starting to slow down. But anything can happen, guys, with this hype behind them. I heard some good CGC news came out. If we can see some live news, we might be able to see that. You know, we see a price target here is maintained at $65 per share. Can it be growth out at outperform? You know, initiates coverage. Okay, what does this say? Sees big, bright future ahead. So, you know, you know, based on the technicals, guys, there's a bit of good news around CGC right now. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but with the way it's looking, you know, this could run, you know, we know for another 5, 10, 15 percent because we've seen it done before, guys. This is literally looking like a chart we saw from back in uh, August. We can see here it went from $26 where it was at earlier this uh, month, right, or earlier last month in December or middle December, rather, and that's the same spot it was at back in Oct uh, August, right? We started to shoot up and we consolidated literally by the same level we are at right now and and at this point, we can see it was overbought as well. So one right here would think, you know, this is not a good time. We're overbought. We're consolidating at a, you know, a level here where we could reverse and we might not be pushing up to another level, right? But that is what exactly happened. We saw the consolidation. This looks like a little uh, bullish pennant right here, right? And then we popped up to the next level, which is $57. So let's say that happens, guys. Who knows, right? I'm not saying it's going to go all the way here, you know, again, which is a huge move. But let's say we do end up popping up. Are you telling me you don't see it going to $50, $48, $47. I really do see it very possible because we've done it in the past. And when these stocks get hot, guys, they get hot and they end up flying. So let's talk about one that somebody Instagram messaged me today and or yesterday rather, and that was Roku, ticker symbol R-O-K-U. And we've seen Roku, guys. This stock went ballistic, I believe, two weeks ago when it went up like 30% in the matter of two, three days. And if we zoom in here, you'll 
be able to see that, right? From $30, we went all the way back up to $45, which was roughly a 33% move. And from there, we've been holding the $39, $40, $42 range as a new support level for the stock. So this is a good sign, guys, because over the past literally like 8 to 10 trading days, We've been at that support level consolidating nicely on the 180 SMA, and we are seeing a very bullish um, crossover here on the simple moving averages. We've talked about this a bunch in the past, but when the 50 simple moving average breaks the 180 simple moving average to the upside like we're seeing here, that's a very bullish signal. That does signal, it could signal that the stock is pushing up. It has upwards upside over the next coming days. But does this always mean that it's going to go up? Absolutely not, guys. Because if we ended up dumping, let's say tomorrow, back to the mid-30s, you know, this uh, SMA is most likely going to be pushing back under the 180 SMA. But, you know, just judging off these indicators, guys, this is a pretty bullish move. And we can see you can use these SMA indicators to find out where, you know, the stock could be pushing down if you're using them the opposite way, right? Meaning that that, you know, if you're using the uh, 50 SMA crossing over or under rather the 180 SMA, that signals more selling could potentially be coming. It's more bearish, right? That's what the signal of the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA signals. But when it's crossing above, that signals an uptrend potentially bullish move, more upside to come. So in terms of Roku, honestly, right now, it's looking pretty attractive to me. This could be a consolidation point before we bounce on the 50 SMA and start to head back up to, let's say, the $45 range. And this is exactly why I do have it on my watch list. So thanks for the shout out, man. This one's looking pretty good in my personal opinion. Drop a comment down below for any of you all that are still following along and uh, want to just drop a ticker, you know, drop your comments on these stocks. I would love to know what you think. So I'm going to create an alert very quickly here at $41 and uh, 50 cents is at or above. I want to get notified if we do start to push back up, that's going to signal a good buying point in my personal opinion. So what other stocks are we looking at, guys? Tesla's another one. I'm not going to go too deep into this because I talked about it in yesterday's video, but we're holding the $300 support. Uh, we're not really holding it. We're still hovering above it with the green candlestick here on the 180 chart. And I really want to see Tesla, guys. I don't know why my alert's not here, but I really want to see Tesla hold this 300 level, get back to the 305 level, 310 level for a potential entry. And I really do think this is possible, guys, because I think it was a little bit of an overreaction to the news that we got on Friday, I believe, uh, that they're cutting about 7% of their workforce or something like that. I think it was 7%, and the stock dropped 13% after that. So once this news blows over, I think it's going to blow over in the next coming days, maybe next coming weeks. I think Tesla is slowly going to start to stabilize. We're slowly starting, are going to start to see a pushback up, and that's going to, you know, open up a solid entry in my opinion. So 305, let's set that alert on uh, Tesla. Perfect. Right there, I want to see the consolidation, the pushback up before entering. And from there, we can get a potential 9, 10% profit. No problem in terms of Tesla stock. So another stock that was shouted out was ticker symbol BJ. This is BJ's Wholesale Club Holdings. So in terms of the technicals on this chart, it's actually looking pretty solid, right? We saw a bottoming out point, a double bottom here on uh, the BJ, right? And this is a good pattern for a reversal to the upside when we do see a double uh, bottom, right? And we kind of see a uh, inverse head and shoulders here in a sense as well. We're seeing this W pattern. And what I really do like about this is that we peaked above the, uh, the uh, what's this called? This resistance at around $24.65. We peaked above it all the way up to around $25.50. And now we're pulling back with a solid green candlestick at a higher low from the previous low 
at around $23.65. So what I want to see, honestly, in terms of uh, ticker symbol BJ, is I want to see it break out of this $25 range. I really want it to be out of this resistance spot here because let's say now that we dipped below it, let's say on Monday we end up opening or on Tuesday rather we end up opening down in the $24 range, you know, that's going to be a rejection technically by this resistance and that won't be a good entry entry point until we bounce either bounce on the 180 or the 50 SMA and start to curl back up or we see a little bit of consolidation to start to curl back up right so if we do end up pushing back down this is not going to be really good uh, in my personal opinion for the next couple of days in terms of BJ but let's say we open up you know in the $25 range maybe $24.75 and we slowly start to close the gap between um, $25.30 right and around let's say uh, 2570 right around here that's going to be a good sign right and we, if we potentially fill this gap of three percent we could run if we break the 2530 of resistance and head into the 26 dollar range right that's not too out of reach but first like I said I would love to see it slowly start to get into the 2470 range to fill this gap that we have right here. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of uh, ticker symbol BJ. Another one that was shouted out was ticker symbol SQ, and this is Square. And in terms of Square, you know, this is not looking like a stock that I'm uh, looking to trade, to be completely honest with you guys, right? So we see here, and my reasoning behind that is that. You know, Square is extremely overextended right now in terms of the RSI, right? We're nearing a resistance at around $73, $74. And this chart's really screaming for a pullback, in my personal opinion. And you might be saying, Stas, you're kind of a hypocrite, right? You said on Cron and CGC that, you know, the charts look the same. They're overbought. They're a little bit overextended, but you would brought, you would trade those. So why aren't you trading SQ? Well, my answer to that is there's not as much hype behind SQ as there is to CGC and Cron. You guys might think I'm BSing you, but hype plays a huge, huge role in terms of stock runs, right? The stocks that run 10, 15% in a day, a lot of those have hype behind them, right? And right now, guys, you know, this run that I've been seeing in SQ, I think it's dying down a bit. I think it's going to die down a bit while the hype still lives on in Cron and CGC over the next couple of days from my personal opinion and from how I'm looking at it. So in terms of Square, honestly, I would just love to see a pullback on it. If it pulls back maybe to 68, 69, that could be a good spot to hop in because at that point, you know, we'll be at a point where we'd be able to fill that gap again if we do end up holding it as a support level. And by that, I mean, you know, if we pull back here, end up holding this level, we could fill the gap from there back up to $71, $72, which would be around a 6% profit, or back to 74 if we do get to this resistance, which would be around a 9 10 11% profit. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of SQ. Would love to see a pullback before a potential entry into that one right there. So that's really just a couple of stocks that I got called out on Instagram. Not too many and they are looking pretty attractive uh, in my opinion, especially if Square does end up pulling back. So really quickly, let's take a look at the NASDAQ futures, guys. We do see they're down about $40 right now, down about 0.6%. So the rejection at the top of this channel looks pretty valid in my personal opinion, and it looks like we're headed back to that 6680 level as of right now, which would touch that 50 SMA as a support, right? We see the cross here, the 50 above the 180, issuing more bullish run potentially, issuing more uptrend, uh, you know, movement to come. We saw that from the cross, right? It crossed around here. We pushed up for two higher lows, and now we're pulling back. So I'm going to take a look at the $6,700 range potentially as a new support 
for the NASDAQ futures. And if we're taking a look at the crude oil futures, they're currently up around 12 points. So if we start to pull back a little bit, heading into the market open tomorrow, that could be a good sign for DWT. And once we start to hold the 50 SMA, that could be a good sign for UWT as a potential reversal spot to the upside for crude oil. And for those of you guys that don't know what I'm talking about, UWT and DWT, they are two inverse ETFs that trade on crude oil. And the beautiful thing about it is if you play them correctly, you can play the pullback on crude oil if we do have a pullback by playing DWT because that one goes up when crude oil sells off. And you can also play the uh, the inverse, which is UWT, if we do get the pullback and we start to consolidate and curl back up for the continuation of the uptrend, right? That would be a good spot to get into UWT for a, you know, a couple day swing trade if you do want to or a day trade, right? And I say if you do want to because they're technically not meant to be uh, held for more than one day. These inverse ETFs, right? If you read the website, there's a warning. It tells you that. But you can get away with holding them a couple of days. I've personally done this. I haven't really been doing it over the past couple of months, but I'm guilty of doing it. You know, a couple months back, I do it here and there when I see a screaming opportunity. And if we do pull back here, guys, this could be a good opportunity for a couple of days in a UWT. And also, JDST is looking pretty good, which is a gold future ETF, the bear ETF, meaning whenever gold futures are going down, JDST is going up. So we saw the big sell-off at the rejection at the $1,300 level in terms of the gold futures. We're holding the 180 SMA here, but if we break the 180 SMA, that could be a good opportunity to trade JDST for a couple of days. But if we hold this spot, you know, this could be a very good entry level for JNUG, which is the inverse to JDST, right? So if we hold this and start to push back into the 1280, 82, 83, maybe mid 1280s, that could be a very good entry for JNUG, guys. So now that I went over a couple of stocks, ETFs, you know, I know some of them I talked about in yesterday's video, some new ones as well. Let's take a look at what I do in terms of scanning. This is only going to be about a minute or two because I don't want to hold you guys too much longer, but it's very simple, guys. I have this scanner here. It's pulling stocks that are between $20 and $40 with a million volume minimum to the maximum, which here is about $200 million. And we have the beta here, which really shows how volatile a stock is, right? If you Again, if you guys want to see a more in-depth video on this, type in on my channel, Scanner. You'll find the video. The thumbnail is a, it says Swing Trading Scanner. Click that video, watch that video, but it's very simple, guys. I just run the scanner, click scan, and then I go through these tickers and I find ones that look attractive in my personal opinion, right? So let's say I want to look at eBay. I would go to charts here and I would type eBay, right? eBay, then we'll see the chart. We'll do some lines, technical analysis, supports, resistances, all that jazz. And then we'll decide whether or not we want to add it to our watch list, right? And this is how I actually found AMD. No BS here, guys. I, I scanned it. Looked up AMD, you know, I went to the charts, boom, 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 right? I just typed it in, and then we see exactly what it's looking like, uh, you know, from my technical analysis, right? And then I added it onto my watch list because I want to see for a potential breakout, right? So this is just very simple, guys. It does take time, but if you have 30 minutes and you get very efficient at doing this, you can build a watch list very quickly with like 30, 40 stocks in it that do that do have potential value to you. And it really does depend on the situation, right, guys? Sometimes you won't find many stocks, but sometimes you'll find a bunch. But, you know, going for around 10 stocks is not too out of the uh, reach here. Not too long. Of, uh, you know, it doesn't take too long to do it. Let's type in AA, right, Alcoa. So we can see that one's not looking too good. It's getting rejected by the 180 SMA. Let's screw down a little bit. And you can also like, you know, you can filter if you want to see the ones that have the biggest gains. All right, let's take a look at OZK and FANH. So OZK reminds me of Ozark. Have you guys watched that show? I've heard it was pretty good. I might take a look at it. What was the other one? Um, 
What was the other one? Oh my God, my short-term memory is crap. F-A-N-H, right? So we can see that one looks a bit overextended, right? So F-A-N-H, let's take a look at that one. All right, this one, okay, this one's looking like it found a bottom here. It's pushing back up. This could be a potential breakout spot, right? So you can see, guys, what I pretty much do here. And, you know, there's a bunch that you'll know based on the ticker. Well, I know a bunch of tickers. You know, I don't know how many of you guys know, but there's a bunch that I can pull out here so we can take a look at M, right? This is, uh, what's this one? Uh, Macy's, right? Macy's, yeah, we can see Macy's here. We're slowly starting to curl back up. This one could be a nice potential play back up to the 50 SMA at around $27. And if it breaks that, you know, back to the 180 SMA. So that's pretty much what I do, guys. You know, I scan, add them to my watch list, and continue rinse and repeat the process, right? So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. If you did like it, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I hope you all enjoy your night. Peace out. I'll catch you in the chat tomorrow morning. Good luck to everyone. I'll see you soon.